Hello my quilty friends, it's Vicki from the Covered Bridge Quiltry and today we're going to show you how to make a pillowcase. These are the things you're going to need to make your pillowcase today. You're going to need a rotary cutter, a ruler, and a rotary mat. You're going to need some pins, an iron, and of course some fabric. We're going to show you today how to do the roll it up method or the burrito method of making a pillowcase. I prefer a slightly longer pillowcase, so I use 10 inches by width of fabric for my cuff and 30 inches by width of fabric for the body of my pillow. Let's get started. The first thing you're going to do is trim up your fabric. 45 width fabric is not really 45 inches. It's more likely to be, let's say, 42 by the time you've taken off the salvages. Now this fabric may be, let's say, 43, and this one only be 42 and a half by the time the salvages are off but we're going to make them even so that it's easier to create a perfect pillowcase. Once you've straightened your fabric and made it 30 inches or 26 and a half, whatever you prefer, it's now time to cut off this salvage. And wanting to make sure that both of my fabrics have a matching size, because the salvages can be different on each piece of fabric, I'm going to go ahead and fold this fabric in half, lining up my left side here. I'm making sure that my folded edge is nice and um, one on top of each other and I'm looking for that nice straight side. I'm then going to place my cuff on top of it. I'm lining up my pieces. I'm making sure that it is all the way over and that all three pieces here are lined up. I'm making sure that everything is stacking itself on top of each other. Once I've done that, I'm going to take my ruler and cut off my salvage on the right side. Another method that you could use is measure each piece individually and then cut them individually. For myself, I think this works well. I can be very vigilant on making sure to check that I'm getting all of the salvages off at the same time. Now, we can line this up also and measure that we have 10, 20, 21, 21 inches will give you your 42 width of fabric because of course they're folded in two. So as I measure here, I'm looking, I'm checking to make sure that all of the layers themselves have enough room to cut that salvage right off. I'm lining myself up with the bottom and lining myself up so that I'm nice and straight. I prefer to line up from the bottom of my fold here and I'm going to go ahead, use my rotary cutter, and cut off the salvage. I now know that my, oh, I missed there. I now know that my fabric is even in width for the pillowcase body and the pillowcase cuff. Now comes the fun part. We're now going to assemble our pillowcase. So here you have the cuff of your pillowcase. We're going to put it right side up and we're going to put right sides together. So this is the body of my pillowcase and I'm lining it up with the cuff. Now I'm being careful to make sure that I line up the sides carefully. And here, not so important that I get it perfect now. Once we get to pinning, that's where we're going to be more careful on being exact. I'm going to take the bottom of my fabric and fold it upwards. Now I don't want to match it all the way to the top, I just want to fold it in half so this will be easier to roll. And now comes the burrito part of this method. We're going to roll this fabric until it is somewhat in the center of our cuff. We want to be able to take this cuff and fold it over the body of the fabric. Once we've done that, this is where we're going to be a little bit more particular on how we're lining this fabric up. So I'm lining up my fabric, all three layers, and I'm taking a pin and I'm pinning it right here. And I'm going to continue moving downwards towards the other end, lining up all three thicknesses and pinning them together. So all three thicknesses and I'm going to continue doing that all the way to the end.
Once this is all done, I'm ready to take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew a quarter inch all the way across. Now I'm going to sew a quarter inch from the side. I always like to give it a little back stitch and then sew forward. Now as I move forward, as I move forward in my pillowcase, I'm making sure that if I haven't placed enough pins, that things are lined up. I'm going to sew a quarter inch from the side. Using my quarter inch foot for myself makes a huge difference. Pulling the pins as I go and making sure that I get a nice quarter inch with all three fabrics inside my seam. It's important to not let that center fabric slide under. You don't want it to be a nice hole on the other side when you're done. And there you go. A nice quarter inch seam all the way across. Now that we've sewed the quarter inch seam, it's time to flip this burrito inside out. I'm removing my pins because you do not want to leave pins in there. Once you've flipped it, it's not that easy to get those pins out of there. So you're going to go ahead and insert your hand inside our burrito. And then you're going to pull out the fabric that's on the inside. And this is going to create a cuff that will not have a raw edge. Once you get it going, it'll go quickly. All right, so here you have it. We've inserted the cuff. So here you have it. Your cuff is now firmly attached. So if you'll notice, there is no actual seam that you can see. The seam is hidden on the inside. So this is where it's important to iron this correctly. You're going to want to iron pushing outwards to make sure you get a nice flat seam. And then before you get to the edge and make the edge nice and crisp, you're going to flip it to the other side and iron it this way. Let's do that. Now that we flipped it inside out, we're gonna go ahead and iron our cuff. This is an important part. You don't want this to buckle later. So I'm pulling gently on my cuff and ironing it. I like to use my ironing mat I find it creates a nice crisp line. Now before I go all the way to the edge, I'm going to go ahead and flip it to the other side first. So I'm going to do all one side. I'm pushing my fabric to make sure it doesn't buckle. And I'm moving down the side of my pillowcase. So again, not going all the way to the outside. I don't want that to crease quite yet. I'm not quite ready to give it its permanent spot there. All right, so much harder to iron for a video than to iron just for myself here. But here we go, we're ironing this without going all the way to the edge. pushing up, making sure that seam is nice and open. And once I've done that, I'm going to flip my pillowcase and do the same thing on the other side. This time, see, this is where you get that buckle if you don't pull a little bit here. Now this time I'm pushing this way and as I'm pushing, I'm gonna go all the way to the edge to make this cuff nice and crisp on its line here. I want the edge of this to be nice and crisp.
in the grand scheme of things, this is probably not going to stay this crisp once I've washed it because I don't iron my pillowcases. Again, I'm pushing and pushing, trying to get that seam open. And now I have a nicely pressed with a crisp side cuff. We're almost done. Look how quick this is. Basically, we're going to be closing up our pillowcase. Now, our instinct is fold right sides together and sew. In this case, we're not going to do that. We want to do a French seam, which means that we want the seams to be hidden on the inside. So what I'm going to do is actually fold it wrong sides together. I'm folding it wrong sides together and this is where it's important to do a couple key pin parts. So what I'm doing is I'm pinning these two cuffs first. I'm going to pin, pin this side by side so that they line up perfectly because that's what you're going to notice if you're going to notice anything is the fact that the cuff may not line up if you kind of just sew it and without pinning anything. Then I'm going to pin the edges. And for anybody who's interested, you can pin in between. If you don't want to pin, if you'd like to just sew it up and we all do it, then I would also pin this end, hold it taut and pin the center. That way there you have some key points that you're going to use uh, to make sure that this doesn't end up crooked. Now there are some people who will pin all the way and that's totally okay. We're now going to take this over to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew a quarter inch all the way down and all the way across. So in one fell swoop, we're gonna go and close this pillowcase off. Now that I've sewn all the way around, it's time to remove my pins and flip this inside out. Now before I do that, there are a couple things that we should know. Some people choose to sew a quarter inch on the outside and when they flip it inside out and do the French seam, which means sewing it again to hide the seam, they'll use a quarter inch again. Some people, like myself, will sew a quarter inch on the outside, flip it inside out and sew a half inch on the inside. That allows to tuck in all of this. Either way, I feel that you should always be trimming this up. Before we flip this inside out, I'm going to trim off my seam. I'm not doing it because I think the seam needs to be smaller. I'm doing it so that I have a nice, fresh seam that doesn't have a bunch of fray to it. Now, some people will use a pinking blade, which really helps in this situation. But if you only have a straight blade at home, or sometimes it's just because it's convenient you have the straight blade in your hand, you can go ahead and cut off a little bit of the seam to be able to ensure that you don't have any of those fray pieces out there. We're now going to flip our pillow inside out. So what we're doing is flipping it inside out, making sure to poke out those corners. And make sure that it is all nice and flat. So you can finger press this or you can use your iron. I prefer to use my iron. This way there I'm making sure that my seams are really gonna be tucked in and not shown on the outside because we now have that raw edge on the outside. So I'm pushing it out, making sure my corners are nice and square and I'm gonna take that to the iron. Now that we've ironed this, we're ready for the last step and that is doing the French seam. So we're going to want to hide the raw edge seam that is on the outside. So but we can do that by sewing a quarter inch or half inch, depending on what you prefer, all the way down and all the way across. Quarter inch seam is usually what is recommended. I recommend the half inch. I find that if I use a half inch, I'm really gonna make sure that that raw edge is hiding and that there's no pokies there. And I don't have to spend time with tweezers trying to get them out. 
This way here, I can ensure that my seam is well hidden. So let's take that to the sewing machine. Now that I've sewn my half inch, I'm ready to flip my pillow inside out and show you the finished product. I flipped my pillowcase inside out, I've ironed it, and it is finished. You'll notice that we have no raw edge on the outside, no raw edge on the inside. So a nice French seam. And there you have it, a finished pillowcase. That's how easy and simple they are to make. You can make a variety of different pillowcases, whether it be a matching one to your quilt, something more unique for your child, or maybe you're having something that you want a pillowcase for every holiday, because we do do that, you know. So these beautiful sheep are going to make their way over to my own bed because we all know that I love sheep. I hope you enjoyed your tutorial. I will show you in the comments the link to where you can get the free actual pattern um, called Roll It Up Pillowcase. It was from the Million Dollar Pillowcase Challenge. So I'll put the link there for you to be able to download it. When we sell a kit online or at the store, we always make sure that you have enough fabric to make them exactly like I've made it today. If you're interested, go to our website, www.thequiltree.com. Have a great day, my quilty friends.